good morning. Uh, I have the enviable position of being right before lunch. I don't know why it says 45 minutes on there. No, just kidding. And I've come from Oregon, the rainforest, and it's, I can tell it's quite dry. So, um, But uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and give you an update on what's going on with Intel. Today is a, an exciting day for Intel. Today, just about an hour ago, we announced our second generation Xeon scalable processors, along with the Optane DC persistent memory products. Now, we announced a lot more, but these are the two that I'm going to focus on today. So with that, you know, when we were designing the second generation product, what did we really want to do? When it comes to HPC, getting things done, you know, in as little time as you can get them done is important. So what did we focus on? We focused on features and capabilities to enable that to happen. So AVX 512, being able to get more work done in less clocks, okay? This is an accelerator, not just for HPC and math, but also the fundamental basis for DL Boost and the AI acceleration that we provide in that capability. Memory bandwidth goes up on the second generation product. Optane, persistent memory. This opens up opportunities where you can go to large, mo large memory nodes at a lower price point than DRAM. It also opens up opportunities for innovation in storage and storage architectures. And I believe, you know, much like the scientists on that uh, previous presentation looked at those unique vector capabilities that that product had, how do I use those? I think scientists will take a look at persistent memory. How do I take advantage of persistence to get exponential types of gains that I couldn't otherwise get? Architectural you know, efficiency, that's the second tenet of our products, okay? It's important that you have an architecture that has good single thread performance and that you scale well from single nodes to many, many nodes. Those are tenets of the Xeon product line. Then we bolster that with software tools. I fundamentally believe that we have the best compilers in the world and the best math li libraries in the world. We continue to move that forward as well as investing in the open ecosystem. And with that, our customers are able to realize better efficiency, more value from our products with less work, and ultimately delivering better science. So I'm going to go through a few of the key things on the second generation products. Architecture performance. You know, we all know about Amdahl's Law. It was mentioned in one of the earlier talks today. Up to 1.7x the alternative architecture. Okay. AVX 512, when we actually look at running benchmarks on Intel versus AVX 512 versus AVX 2, you get up to 2x performance. I'll show a couple. And then we bring in the Intel Xeon 9200 product, which will give us a new class of Xeon CPUs that will boost the performance and the memory bandwidth and doubling the number of memory channels that we had in the prior generation Cascade Lake. With that, we also bring DL Boost. DL Boost builds on top of AVX 512. If you don't have AVX 512, you can't get DL Boost. This allows us to build on top of the fact that how many times have we heard AI and HPC mentioned today? If you want to take your product towards AI, you better build your architecture to go that way. DL Boost, Boost is a first. We've also announced that we're bringing additional enhancements in the next generation, okay? What we've done is, if you look at, we've delivered 14x in inference from what we first were able to do with a Skylake processor or the first generation scalable processor at our launch. So, and with that, I talked about the Optane memory, about being able to deliver large memory and do it cost effectively. So, why is it important to have a strong computer architecture? 
This is just an example based on some work that we did with some of our partners around Cosmoflow. And what you see is that, again, Amdahl's law. You can only accelerate as much as the serial component of the program prevents you from doing so. And if you look at the graph on the right, the worker nodes, 61% of that is based on wait time. So if you have poor single thread performance, you're going to wait a lot. Only 22% was active. Now this was after a lot of investment was done to make the code take advantage of all the parallel capability. Okay. AVX 512, HPC and AI, right? Alternatives offer eight flops per clock at 64, 16 flops per clock at 32, okay? With our products, you get 32 or 64, twice as much work per clock. In addition, with that DL boost, taking advantage of AVX 512, at 8-bit instructions, we get 256 ops per clock. So for your AI inference type of workloads, and I believe others will find ways to apply this to other parts of science and other usages. Fundamentally, you get a huge boost. Look at AVX 512. On real financial workloads, we've measured, and this is the difference between turning AVX 512 on on an Intel part versus off, up to 1.9x on the full applications. Okay, I'd mentioned the Intel Platinum 9200 processors. Previously, we'd call these Cascade Lake AP. These bring a opportunity to provide additional scale, up to twice as many memory channels, 12 memory channels per node, the best compute density and flop density of any processor-based processor, processor-based processor node, and each of those memory channels running at a higher frequency than the current parts. It's an optimized multi-chip package, and when I say it's optimized, it's designed to bring the perform full performance and capability. Remember that our Skylake processors, which Cascade Lake or the second generation to the follow-on, were designed to scale and provide good scalability in systems that are one-way, two-way, four-way, or eight-way. From the bottom up, the architecture was designed to scale. So, this was designed to be a no compromise way to get to higher core counts, higher performance, and higher memory bandwidth. Also, if we want to look at HPC and AI and, configure, you know, and, and the convergence, I'd mentioned earlier the 14%, the, the 14x gains that we had from relative to when we launched. And this is a ResNet inference benchmark. Other inferencing benchmarks would be in a similar range. But the delta was we focused on fixing the software and the underlying software to deliver the performance. And with what we had previously with Skylake, 5.7x of that gain was fixing the software. About two and a half times that, so you move from Skylake to Cascade Lake or Gen 1 to Gen 2, about two and a half times that comes from the add addition of VNNI or DL Boost, all right? Being able to do those four 8-bit operations per clock. Looking at, you know, the DL Boost, right? We'd gotten a 1.3x using on Skylake or Gen 1, moving from 32-bit math to 8-bit integer. When you move to 8-bit, stay on an 8-bit integer and add in VNNI or Intel DL Boost, you essentially get up to a 3x. And what we saw in the actual measurements is about a 2.5x. So an impressive gain and an impressive reason why, as you look forward to moving to HPC and AI in that convergence, to settle on the Cascade Lake or our Gen 2 processors. Okay, and then with just a few minutes left and lunch ahead of us, 
you know, building on top of that theme of convergence of HPC, AI, and deep learning, we announced with our friends at Argonne uh, the uh, A21 product, or uh, Aurora, and this will accelerate that convergence and is based on Intel products and, and you know, great collaboration with the labs. So with that, I'm going to actually end a little early and give you time to go to lunch. <laughs>